Are you ready? The 11th Starship flight is now just around the corner. After months of major preparations, the final checkout steps have been successfully carried out and completed. So what exactly has SpaceX accomplished during this crucial phase? Alongside the readiness for Flight 11, the company is also accelerating development on several systems that will support future missions, ensuring that progress never slows down. Meanwhile, across the globe, Europe is strengthening its cooperation with South Korea and Japan on new space initiatives and asteroid exploration missions, marking another exciting chapter in international space collaboration. Let's explore all these updates together in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starbase Texas, the location recently mentioned by Elon Musk on X, is once again the center of attention in the aerospace industry. Today marks an important milestone, as at around 6.15 p.m., SpaceX is set to launch the highly anticipated Flight 11 of Starship. Before this historic moment, a series of major preparations had already been completed. Ship 38, after being fully loaded with Starlink satellites, was rolled out to the launch pad and stacked atop Booster 15. SpaceX officially confirmed the significance of this mission, stating, This is planned to be the final launch from Pad 1 at Starbase in its current configuration. Indeed, this flight carries a dual meaning. It represents not only the final flight of the Starship V2 configuration, but also the last launch to take place from Pad 1 in its current design. With such importance attached to this mission, every step of preparation has been treated with extreme precision and care. One of the most critical factors for a smooth and successful launch is the weather. Fortunately, current conditions at Starbase are favorable, with minimal clouds and fog. SpaceX has reported that the weather is currently 80% favorable for launch. However, the weather can change suddenly and it remains an unpredictable element. The SpaceX team will continue to closely monitor every shift in atmospheric conditions right up until launch time to ensure the rocket lifts off in the safest possible window. While external factors like weather play a role, the success of this flight will depend even more on the systems developed and maintained by SpaceX itself. The ground infrastructure, including the OLM, the chopsticks system, the QD system, and the tank farm must all perform flawlessly. Engineers have been conducting continuous inspections and checkouts on these systems since the rocket was fully stacked. Each of these systems carries its own risks. The QD system, for example, could experience issues such as fuel leaks or connection faults, while pumps within the tank farm could fail to provide sufficient pressure to fuel the rocket. These problems, if they arise, can lead to a scrubbed launch attempt. SpaceX has faced such challenges in the past, which is why extreme Extreme caution and constant supervision are necessary during final stages of preparation. The vehicle itself also requires close attention. Any leaks within the propellant tanks or connecting pipes could cause a delay or even a full cancellation of the launch attempt. Such issues often only reveal themselves during the actual fueling process, making last-minute troubleshooting crucial. In addition, several key components on board Starship must perform perfectly to ensure mission success. The heat shield, which has received significant upgrades since the previous flight will face one of its toughest tests yet as it protects the vehicle during atmospheric re-entry. This system's performance is especially important for Starship's future as upcoming missions will include simulated return journeys to Starbase. The Raptor engines both on the booster and the ship will also play vital roles, not only in reaching orbit but also in executing complex maneuvers, including controlled landings and engine relights. Meanwhile, the flaps, particularly the aft flaps, have drawn attention as well. They suffered damage in the previous flight, and engineers have been working tirelessly to ensure that issues does not recur. Another system to keep an eye on is the payload mechanism, which functioned exceptionally well on the last mission. Its continued reliability will be essential for maintaining the success of Starship's orbital and payload deployment operations. All these systems, from ground infrastructure to vehicle structure and payload systems, are being carefully verified during these final hours before liftoff. While these last-minute checkouts may not seem as dramatic as the earlier major preparations, they are among the most important tasks leading up to launch. They can determine not only whether the rocket leaves the ground on time, but also whether the mission achieves its objectives once it does. As Flight 11 nears launch, it's worth pausing to acknowledge the unwavering commitment of the SpaceX team. Their meticulous craftsmanship and 
tireless pursuit of excellence are the driving forces behind every successful Starship mission. Show your support for the team by commenting, keep working, keep succeeding below. Then like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's incredible development journey. The 11th Starship flight is only hours away and it promises to be another historic step toward humanity's future in space. As SpaceX has confirmed, Flight 11 will mark the final mission of both the current Starship V2 configuration and the use of Pad 1 in its existing layout. In preparation for what comes next, let's begin at the production site, where a flurry of activity has followed the departure of Ship 38 to the launch pad. One of the most notable movements was that of a new test tank, which left Mega Bay 2 and was transported to the Star Factory. Since this tank originated from Mega Bay 2, where ship prototypes are typically developed, it's believed to be a test tank for the upcoming ship version rather than the booster focused designs like TT-17 and 18.3 at Massey. This suggests that the tank could incorporate several upgrades that will define the new V3 ship. Once further modifications are made inside the Star Factory, it's expected to move to Massey for a series of pressure and stress tests, marking another important step toward refining Starship's future design. In addition, a new lifting jig has arrived at Mega Bay 2. This equipment, noticeably different from previous versions, will likely serve as the primary support rig for the construction and assembly of the first V3 ship. Its presence is a strong signal that the next generation vehicle's assembly is imminent. This development is further reinforced by recent imagery showing that scaffolding around the S39 nose cone inside Star Factory is being dismantled, an unmistakable sign that the component is nearing completion and will soon be transported for stacking. Adding to the anticipation a PEZ dispenser system, Starship's payload deployment mechanism was also recently moved into Mega Bay 2. Given that no other ships currently occupy this area, it's reasonable to assume this dispenser belongs to S39. What makes this development particularly intriguing is its timing. Traditionally, the payload deployment system is integrated later in the pre-launch process, close to final assembly. However, the early arrival of this component opens up the possibility that SpaceX could be shifting to an earlier installation sequence. If the PEZ dispenser is installed during stacking, it would represent a major procedural change, making the overall assembly more streamlined but also introducing new challenges. Installing the system earlier could simplify integration since the current method, installing through a narrow payload door after the full stack, is complex and time-consuming. However, early installations would require extra care as the payload system would need to withstand the stresses of vibration testing and environmental exposure throughout the ship's development phase. The engineering team must strike a delicate balance between convenience and protection to ensure mission reliability. Meanwhile, construction progress continues steadily on Gigabay, the massive new facility that will support future Starship production at an even greater scale. Recent on-site observations reveal that more steel frame piles have been erected, forming the foundational skeleton of what will soon become one of SpaceX's largest manufacturing complexes. This structure will play a key role in enabling mass production of the next generation Starship and booster hardware, allowing SpaceX to increase its launch cadence and reduce turnaround time between flights. Moving from the production site to the launch site, Pad 2 remains a focal point of development. The area has been receiving new installations at a rapid pace, particularly in the liquid oxygen and methane sections of the QD system. These newly installed flex hoses, which are curved transition pipes connecting the main supply lines to the QD interface, are critical for fueling and detanking operations. The presence of these components signals that Pad 2's infrastructure is entering a more advanced phase of integration. Still, much work remains before Pad 2 becomes fully operational. The installation schedule is tight with only this month and the next available if SpaceX hopes to conduct the first V3 flight by December. That leaves little room for delays, meaning the testing and certification phase will need to move forward rapidly once construction concludes. The question that remains is simple, yet profound. Can SpaceX successfully open that new door to the future? The answer will arrive soon written in fire and exhaust above the Texas horizon. Now let's move on to an exciting update about a remarkable collaboration taking shape between Europe, Japan, and South Korea. At the 76th International Astronautical Congress in Sydney, a landmark partnership was formed between ESA and the Korean Aerospace Administration, marking a new era of global cooperation in space exploration. Through a newly signed Memorandum of Understanding, both agencies aim to strengthen their shared capabilities 
across multiple domains, from deep space communication to scientific research and future human spaceflight. The agreement allows ESA and CASA to use each other's ground stations for telemetry, tracking, and command operations, improving mission efficiency and reliability for future deep space ventures. It also lays the groundwork for collaboration in areas such as space weather studies, in space infrastructure, and lunar exploration. ESA Director General Josef Oshbacher hailed the moment as an important step for Europe and Korea, opening great opportunities for our space interests through cooperation. While CASA Administrator Yongbin Yoon expressed optimism, emphasizing that this alliance advances peaceful global collaboration in space. For South Korea, the partnership represents a powerful boost to its fast-growing space ambitions. With ESA's S-Track network lending crucial support, CASA's lunar roadmap is rapidly taking shape. Its Donnery Orbiter, which entered lunar orbit in 2022, continues to send back high-resolution imagery and scientific data. Building on that success, South Korea is developing a robotic lunar lander set to launch aboard a domestically produced rocket, an effort that leads toward its ultimate goal of establishing a lunar base by 2045. To simulate operations under moon-like conditions, CASA has even converted an abandoned mine into a testing ground for lunar missions. Meanwhile, ESA continues expanding cooperation in Asia, notably with Japan. The agency has joined forces with JAXA through a new rideshare agreement that will see ESA's Ramses spacecraft launched aboard Japan's H-3 rocket alongside the Destiny Plus mission. Together, they will study the near-Earth asteroid Apophis before its 2029 flyby, with Ramses complementing Destiny Plus's observations of asteroid Phaethon the source of the Geminid meteor shower. Though Ramses still awaits final funding approval this November, the project underscores ESA's commitment to strengthening global partnerships. These collaborations between Europe, Japan, and South Korea signal a shift toward a more balanced, cooperative future in space exploration. While they may not yet rival the superpowers, their unity, innovation, and shared purpose are forging a new path forward, one where discovery is driven not by competition, but by collaboration among the stars. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.